Let's take a closer look at the markets after Fed Chair Jay Powell's comments last week. Joining us now is Kamal Shri Kumar, Shri Kumar Global Strategies President. Good morning, uh, Shri. So, uh, you know, pretty unequivocal by Jay Powell on Friday, suggesting that, you know, soft landing remains in hand. Inflation seems uh, pretty steadily on a pace toward target. It's time to worry about uh, any potential further weakness in the in the labor market and and cuts are coming. So uh, markets celebrated. What's your reaction? Good morning, Mike. Thank you for having me. I think to begin with, the labor market is not weak. We created 114,000 jobs in July, the latest figure. Keep in mind, in April, it was only 108,000 jobs, and then it picked up again. So April to July, there was an increase, and we would probably have more jobs being created in the months to come. Second, inflation is still above target. And this last part of the journey is always very difficult. And Jerome Powell should know that. He declared victory last December, only to find out that in the first quarter of 2024, inflation perked up again. Uh, the risks here that I see, Mike, are on the U.S. side, that you can still have uh, inflation picking up from different sources, particularly in the case of rent which is still remaining pretty elevated. And I don't think the increase in house prices is going to do anything to calm rent increases. They're going to stay high. And the global scene, again, we have uncertainties relating to fuel prices mm -hmm. and inflation could go up. But you can think of a whole lot of different uh, sources, Mike. So I think it is too soon to declare victory. Well, Paul didn't exactly... <laughs> Powell didn't exactly declare victory over inflation last December. He essentially said rates are peaking, inflation seems like it's down from its highs. And then when the market went too far in the beginning of this year, pricing in half a dozen cuts, you know, in a hurry, he quickly turned and said, no, 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 that's, that's not our plan. And I just wonder why you think that the Fed's framework, as it's been laid out for a long time, which is if inflation is, you know, two and a half percent or so, uh, or at least under three, and the Fed funds rate is at five and three eighths, and you know unemployment is up from three six to four point three. It's time to at least have a more balanced approach. The increase in the unemployment rate has come largely from an increase in the participation rate on the labor. So more people are looking for jobs. You can't find jobs for all of the people coming into the labor force, and the unemployment rate increases as a result. That seems to be the major reason why unemployment rate went up, rather than the fact that layoffs have increased, which is not the case. So I think the remedy that he used is wrong. Second, in December, he did indicate, and the markets did take the message, that rate cuts were imminent. And very little was done to uh, calm down expectations of six rate cuts during 2024. And abruptly, he had to pivot again when inflation did not stay close to what he expected. And we all know this is not the first time that he has been wrong in his inflation expectations. It started from his transitory days. And again, he defended himself, Mike, in the most recent Jack Jackson Hole speech by saying that there were he had a lot of company in the transitory group. But that is not an excuse. Uh, I was writing at the same time that inflation was going to stay high, it was going to stay uh, sustained, and that the, and the interest rates were going to surge. And all of those happened. I don't know why he's in a hurry, number one, and why we should have the so-called forward guidance. I say so-called because it only causes confusion. And why he should be saying that rates are going, suggesting interest rates are going to be cut only to pivot again. This is one of the longest periods when the Fed has remained on pause at a high uh, after a tightening cycle, Sri. It's not as if it's some kind of a hurry. I just feel like the whole framework the Fed has been working with for a while leads them to exactly this conclusion. And I guess if that's your view, that they're, that they're offside this far once again, you must hate bonds here. No, actually, I love bonds. And I have been saying on this program repeatedly that those who buy 10-year and 30-year treasuries are going to benefit, and that's exactly the way it has happened. I started to say that, and in fact, Joe is aware mm -hmm. that I've been riding the yield curve down and saying that long-dated yields are good. And the reason is, I think, 
that the Fed will keep cutting. Because I'm not saying that bonds are a good idea because inflation is going to stay low. I'm saying that because I think the Fed will misjudge the situation. In investors need to take advantage of that. And I have been saying for quite a while that my target for the 10 year is about 350 mm -hmm. on, on the yield. And we haven't reached there yet. And we are going to get there. When you say uh, the Fed is misjudging the situation, do you think there is a potential that the August payrolls could come in much stronger than expected and therefore uh, the adjustment toward policy easing won't ultimately take place? Is that a, a possibility? Uh, Leslie, I think uh, August is whether August turns out to be significantly higher job creation or not. The Fed is determined to cut on September 18th. I think it is no longer data dependent. In fact, even though the Fed says it is data dependent, they want to interpret the data to suit whatever they want to do. And clearly, uh, Jerome Powell and a few of his colleagues have been itching for several months to cut rates. Unfortunately, it did not work out in December. And in September of this year, they are going to do it come what may, Leslie. So my expectation is once they do that, you're going to cause a, one more of a rally. And now the markets essentially made the Fed promise a rate cut. 25 basis points is not going to be enough on September 18th. The market is going to want 50. Why not 75? Why not keep increasing, uh, cutting it by 50 basis points every meeting? Yeah. Problem with it is there is no end when the Fed becomes a follower rather than the leader of the market, when you don't have set principles that you determine interest rates by, the markets are going to take advantage of it.